Um, the complications of zoster, the commonest are post-hepatic neuralgia and ophthalmic uh, complications. I would just uh, refer you to encephalitis. It's clear that, um, and I was listening to Don Gilden talk about this just a couple of weeks ago, that that encephalitis is actually a vasculitis. You get a giant cell vasculitis of the arteries and you must think if you get stroke in a young person, even without a rash, think of zoster uh, because uh, that uh, is certainly one rare manifestation of uh, herpes zoster. And of course, uh, you can get uh, uh, zoster affecting any one of the uh, three branches of the uh, first cranial nerve, but the one that concerns us is, of course, the uh, ophthalmic uh, division uh, and uh, the uh, so-called Hutchinson sign is completely unreliable. Do not uh, uh, think if you see someone with uh, uh, extension of the uh, uh, of zoster onto the nose, that that uh, is the only indication of likely ophthalmic zoster. If you see first cranial nerve zoster, it's got to be managed in conjunction with an ophthalmologist, um, per se. <coughs> fairly quickly. Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, I mentioned before, can be very difficult uh, to diagnose, just a few vesicles uh, around, the, uh, around the ear. Uh, many people have wondered whether all cases of Bell's palsy may be due to zoster. There is no evidence of that, and trials have been carried out with antiviral treatment without showing any evidence of that at all. <coughs> Now, um, the prodromal phase of zoster, why do I emphasize this? It can be very severe, and the severity of the pain is an indicator of the likelihood of post hepatic neuralgia. So here we can see uh, the median duration of pain, uh, and uh, uh, if we look here at the maximum intensity of pain, if you have a severe prodrome, then you are more likely to have post-hepatic neuralgia and particularly severe post-hepatic neuralgia. So that's an important clue to uh, looking after, apart from patients being older, if they have a severe prodrome, be aware that they may, they may actually get post-hepatic neuralgia. Now, how do we define post-hepatic neuralgia? There's been a lot of controversy. For 20 years, I've been involved in this uh, controversy as people have talked about zoster-associated pain. Is it pain that extends beyond the rash, etc.? I think people are settling on a definition of pain beyond 90 days after onset uh, of zoster. 90 days after onset. So it's a cross-sectional effect. And any time between 30 days and 90 days is really subacute uh, pain rather than post hepatic neuralgia. This means that a lot of the trials we had with the antivirals have got to be uh, reconfigured. Uh, an important uh, feature of uh, post hepatic neuralgia is allodynia, which is pain induced by light touch. I'll just look through this. You often see patients who have this allodynia in a fairly broad, uh, so you just touch them and they, they, uh, they uh, recoil, and they may actually have areas of hyposthesia within this uh, region of allodynia and then actually scarring as well. So, um, one of the issues about um, post-hepatic neuralgia is what is its pathogenesis? People are talking about scarring. They've talked about scarring for 20 years. There's a renewed interest in the possibility that some cases of post hepatic neuralgia at least may be due to persistent replication of virus. And uh, we ourselves have found viral antigen in cases of zoster um, at post-mortem five months after onset. So interesting. It's a very severe pain. It's one of the severest pains, uh, acute pain and chronic pain, that you can encounter. And uh, I covered that, so I'll go on. And as you can see, the likelihood of post hepatic neuralgia uh, increases markedly uh, the older that one becomes, into the 50s uh, or 60s. Diagnosis is usually simple. Uh, it's usually uh, uh, clinically apparent. If it's not, you can sample the vesicle uh, and do PCR 
um, or do rapid antigen tests. But PCR is the most sensitive uh, and uh, culture is not particularly sensitive uh, at all. Now the uh, treatment uh, of uh, a herpes zoster, the main thing is to accelerate the healing of zoster lesions, but to limit the duration and severity of acute and chronic pain is our major uh, concern. And uh, the uh, key issue here is very definitely early presentation and clinical recognition. Uh, assess the risk factors for post diabetic neuralgia, use antivirals, consider corticosteroids, aggressive pain management, and perhaps referral to an ophthalmologist. The oral antivirals, valacyclovir or famcyclovir, are better than acyclovir in terms of convenience, and also they give higher blood levels. You're supposed to only use these within uh, 72 hours, but uh, that's somewhat debatable. And if you find someone who's got new lesions beyond 72 hours, uh, and you're only supposed to treat people over 50 years, but if you've got a young person who's got severe prodrome, uh, in fact, severe zoster, I would be treating them as well. Laboratory resistance is very rare. Corticosteroids are not effective for post hepatic neuralgia. They may help you with the acute pain, but that's about all. And as I said before, uh, the uh, compliance is only about 60%. Uh, there are a number of issues about whether famcyclovir or valacyclovir are better, and I mentioned some of the other issues about uh, when to treat and whether we need better antivirals or not. There's a bit of a debate about that at present. How to treat post hepatic neuralgia, antivirals, and also uh, perhaps tricyclic antidepressants. If at six weeks you think someone uh, has had a severe prodrome, ongoing pain, you could consider tricyclic antidepressants. Now, in terms of treatments, uh, there are some, this is a very complex field, and I think uh, simple treatment, uh, uh, obviously simple analgesics, once you get into complexities of treatment, then I would urge you to refer to a pain specialist who may use some of the uh, new anti-epileptic drugs such as gabapentin, pregabalin, and also some of the opioids <coughs> such as tramadol. We've gone through quite extensive um, uh, algorithms recently and they're too complex to consider here. So refer early if you're concerned about PHN. Now, I wanted to finish up just by saying something about the shingles prevention study conducted by Mike Oxman and Myron Levin. This was one of the, this is the second largest vaccine trial ever published. It'll soon be overtaken by a third, I'm told. Uh, these uh, investigators recruited 38,000 uh, uh, men and women of age uh, uh, 60 or over. You can see the age breakdown there. For the vaccine, they used the typical ochre strain, but at 14-fold higher concentrations than the childhood vaccine. You just simply cannot use the childhood vaccine. And you can see that there is some concern uh, about using this in uh, immune compromised patients and there are yet to be uh, a lot more thinking has got to go on about how to immunize immune compromised patients. And the vaccine studies found uh, a reduction of incidence of herpes zoster of about 50%, uh, a reduction of post hepatic neuralgia to a greater extent, post hepatic neuralgia of 66% uh, and of the more burden of illness of 61%. The efficacy tailed off a little bit with age, but uh, it was clear that apart from preventing zoster and preventing post hepatic neuralgia, there was also an ameliorating effect uh, on pain. So that is the um, major advance uh, in this field in the past five to ten years. Thanks, Amy.